Hello, this is Mr. Liebforth. Um, we're looking at the uh, 2012 AB Calculus AP exam. Um, my assumption is that you got the question right in front of you and um, that you know that you can stop the video um, whenever you want and kind of go back and forth. Uh, what you're looking at is a real colorful screen. Uh, I kind of highlighted the question itself. We're looking at um, from 0 to 12 seconds, we have a velocity equation given. This is the typical particle problem. Um, this comes up a lot in some way, shape, or form, but we have, um, you know, it tells you a position. Uh, I used to tell the problems in class, the particles come by, coming by, and it yells out what his position was at a particular point in time. But same idea. One of the keys here is that, you know, position, velocity, acceleration, and kind of that the velocity is the derivative of the position. Acceleration is one, one more step down the second derivative. Um, I went ahead and graphed cosine, so it's important to know what sine and cosine look like roughly. Um, and I also reminded you of a little bit of, since this is on the non-calculator part, a little bit of trig, um, that the period is 2 pi over b, um, because that allowed me to have a framework um, for graphing it. I like to see the graph, um, and so I was able to realize that the period is 12 and graph it out. Um, if you didn't have that, what you can do is you could find um, an algebraic way of solving it out. You can find out a place where the velocity is zero. Um, you can plug in some points. There's other ways to do it too. But question one says, one of the, when is the particle moving to the left? Um, it's moving to the left when the velocity is equal to zero. So um, you get a point just for saying that part. So even if you don't know how to graph it, you forgot cosine, you freaked out, um, if you write that the velocity is equal to zero, you get a point for that. Um, and then if you're able to find the place where it's negative from three to nine down here, then you're good to go. So it's three, oops, three um, is less than or equal to, no, let's just make it less than because of the zero. Three is less than t is less than nine. That's the answer. Um, and so it moves to the left there because the velocity is less than zero there. And so you would need to answer and explain it and you should be good to go there. Um, looks the same, but I changed the work here. B asked for the total distance. Remember for distance or for area, uh, you basically want to take um, the integral. You want everything to be positive there. So it said write but do not evaluate um, from time zero to time six, and we want all the velocities to be positive, and so that'll give us the total distance. And so I think that was a one point problem there. For C, um, C wants the acceleration. So, um, you know, you need to take the derivative. You have velocity. Take the derivative. Um, you should know the derivative of cosine. Um, the derivative, remember, we've been going back and forth, so this is a little, a little tricky here, but the derivative of cosine is negative sine um, pi over 6t. And then make sure you multiply by pi over 6. It's probably going to be a mistake that some people make. Um, and then from there, uh, what we're looking at is to plug in 4, because it wanted the uh, yeah, acceleration at time 4. So negative sine, we got pi over 6 times 4, and then that's pi over 6 on the end. And so that's equal to um, negative pi over 6, we can move that up front. And we got the sine, and 4, 6 is 2 thirds, so it's like 2 pi. I took a gander over, and yeah, they, they want us to keep going here. So two-thirds of pi, you know, I, I wasn't um, having all these things memorized. Two-thirds is here, so that's like 120, that's like 60 degrees. So the sine of 60 degrees, well, we talked about that. You know, the sine of um, 30 is a half. Um, the cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. Um, the sine of 60 um, well, let's just do this. The sine of 60 is that, and the cosine of 60 is 1 half. And so that's kind of how I memorize it. So you got the sine of 60 degrees, um, which is root 3 over 2, and um, it's positive over there. So you got root 3 over 2 times negative pi over 6. And so it's pi root 3 over 12 negatively. All right, so... Um, pi root 3 over 12 negatively, so that's less than 0. So the question
question talks about, you know, not only, you know, what's the acceleration, find it, we did that, but also is it increasing, decreasing, neither at time four. So we know that the acceleration is negative. I'm curious as to whether or not the velocity is negative as well. Um, so let's do cosine of pi over six times four. And so that's cosine of two pi over three. So that's cosine, again, um, the sine a minute ago of 60 degrees was root two over two. Now we're at the cosine of 60 degrees is a half. All right, so I'm looking at uh, one half. Um, if you look at the cosine there, I mean, the sine was positive because it's above, but the cosine um, uh, in this quadrant is going to be negative. So it's negative one half, which is also less than zero. So whenever the acceleration and the velocity um, both have the same sign, so the acceleration and the velocity have the same sign, uh, whenever that happens, that means the speed, which I never like to ask about speed, but that's what it's asking. If the velocity and acceleration have the same side, the speed is increasing, and you want to say that we're talking about at time four. All right, and so that's um, part C. And then what we have is one more part to go, and that's part D. And basically we're asking, you know, what's the position? Um, at time four. So we have time four, the position. What's the position at four? Well, we know at time zero, we're starting at negative two. So at time zero, you're starting at negative two. So that's what we put here. This is pretty standard way to do it. Um, you know, at time zero, you're at negative two. And so you'll, you'll see problems like this throughout the exam. Starting point plus, and then what happens between zero and four. So again, your velocity belongs in here. If you integrate it, you'll get back to the position. That goes back to our rule from the corner. And um, believe it or not, we're going to have to do this by hand. So uh, this will take us some time. Luckily, we have 15 minutes to do the problem. Um, and I'm only about 7 minutes in. I know it'll take you guys a bit longer than that. But um, cosine. Cosine will take us back to sine. So it's sine pi over 6t. And since there's a pi over 6 over there, um, you got to make sure you divide by pi over 6. So again, integrals, derivatives, antiderivatives, derivatives. This time we're going from cosine back to sine. So straighten that out in your head. When you take the derivative, you would have multiplied by pi over 6. When we take the antiderivative, we need to divide by pi over 6. And I'll be evaluating from 0 to 4 once I clean that up a little bit. All right. Um, so I got negative 2 plus, let's do 6 over pi. And then it's sine pi over 6t. And um, basically, you want to evaluate that from 0 to 4. So I got negative 2 plus 6 over pi. You got sine pi over 6 times 4. And then you got minus 6 over pi sine of pi over 6 times 0. And so again, we have to know a little bit of trig here. But this is 2 thirds pi. And so a minute ago we had this thing and we're like uh, two thirds pi. Somewhere over here, the two thirds of it's like sixty degrees. So I know the sine of thirty degrees.
points for writing stuff out at the beginning. So if you just have that um, the antiderivative, the integral written out, um, using the initial condition in there, um, you know, you get um, points for that, and then you have all the work getting to the answer. But potentially, you can get like two out of three points just by setting up the problem correctly. And um, that is it for question six.